Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. While monster spawners were a big topic of reports conversation on the Raritan and Delaware River stretch this spring, there's been a lot of light tackle action, terrific action in the bays and rivers as well. Danielle, or Daniel Falcone here enjoyed some of that schooly action while solo fishing down in Cape May recently. But the big news coming out of South Jersey at this point is the bigger fish, presumably the post-spawn push of some fish out of the Delaware and out of the Chesapeake. A 47-incher, for example, on Sunday evening for Dom, it was reported back to the folks at Sea Isle Bait and Tackle. Assume this is a release. If we're talking about 38-inch and up fish, if I don't say release, assume it was released because you have to release those 38-inch and above fish here in the Garden State in 2021. I'm Jim Hutchinson, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine and doing our Sunday reports this week for thefisherman.com. Anthony Califano, he's our South Jersey field editor. He had a lot of good things to say about the spring run finally taking off down along the southern coast. In fact, his quote was, quote, some huge stripers both in the ocean and in the Delaware Bay. That's a fact that's further been substantiated uh, starting Monday morning. Uh, I saw that Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle, he said striped bass fishing was, quote, on fire at Absecon Inlet on Sunday. One of those uh, should have been here yesterday moments that makes me think, well, what was I doing on Sunday? Oh, I was working. And it makes you wonder why you were watching Martin Truex win at Darlington when in actuality you could have been getting in on some of those striped bass. There was solid action on both sides of Absecon Inlet through the weekend and also through the middle of this week too. We heard the same thing from Noel at One Stop Bait and Tackle in Atlantic City. And Andrew Borkowski, he reported back to Riptide on a 49 inch caught and released with help from Brutal Lou on the jetty. Uh, I believe that was a Riptide rotter as well. So the good news in Atlantic and Cape May County will be great news in the coming weeks as we get into Ocean County as well. Surfcasters have been eagerly awaiting good fish along the front stretch, Atlantic, Cape May, Ocean, and Monmouth County. So hopefully things will start catching fire at this point. In fact, Fisherman's Headquarters and Ship Bottom reported on great action on the LBI surf front uh, right into the new moon on May 11th. The Fish Heads crew, they called it a phenomenal showing of striped bass in both quantity and quality. I also shared a fish uh, photo here. Uh, this was Paul Bandini, very first cast of the season since being back from Florida, landed this 48 or 40 inch, 20 pound striper on fresh clam from there at Fish Heads. Now, if you're on the north side of Barnegat Inlet from the stretch, let's say from the, uh, from the park all the way up to Point, we're looking for some good action, but smack dab in the middle of all of that, is a brand new tackle shop to tell you about. Frank and the boys from Gabriel Tackle uh, in Brick, they've just opened up a brand new location, uh, a second location right now. This is uh, Gabriel Tackle in Chadwick Beach. It's located on Route 35, corner of 73 Pacific Avenue in Lavalette, Chadwick Beach. Uh, it's right across from the Wawa, can't miss it. So if you're gearing up to head out on the beach, your coffee and your, uh, your hoagies uh, and everything like that, but obviously uh, you wanna stop in here. This shop, Believe it or not, this is it was Jim's Bait and Tackle going back to 1949. Uh, then it became Chadwick Beach Bait and Tackle after that. And now Gabriel Tackle, Chadwick Beach. You've got a bunch of stuff to, uh, to, to choose from here. And Frank says he's really going to start stocking it, uh, especially for surf casters looking to gear up, uh, not just this spring through the summer, but this is going to be a, a, a shop in progress as Frank continues to get some great stuff in here. Definitely want to check it out. And while we are getting on that front side action of the striped bass, just getting underway, it's perfect timing as well. Fresh bunker. Uh, clams are still difficult to get, but we are getting into that time of year where chunk bunker in the surf on a circle hook could put you in a catch and release of a pretty good fish. Uh, also catching some small plastics, uh, the small plastics, the little Kettle Creek swing shads, they've been working on some of these stripers on the front beaches. But again, I think it's gonna be starting to get into that time where we can start using those bigger lures, uh, the bigger plugs, the poppers, the pencils, that should be getting started any day now. In fact, uh, speaking with Petey up the road here, Charlie's Bait and Tackle, uh, he had Bill reportedly sanding a good fish on Monday morning, which kind of looked like a tin to me, uh, probably in that heavy surf. 
but we're definitely catching uh, into that season where we can start enjoying the front side beaches up into Ocean and Monmouth County as well. I heard from Valerie Seafelt. She had a 28 inch striper from the inlet wall earlier this week. So you have a mix of inlet stripers and those bluefish as well. And that leads up into Shark River as well. But the good news for those folks up on the rare and who were missing out on the big fish in the last couple of weeks, because that first wave of stripers went up the Hudson to spawn, well, you've got some more arrivals coming in to Raritan Bay as well. In fact, the largest striped bass boated uh, aboard Little Hawk with Captain uh, Joe Acapini came earlier this week. It was a 52 inch, 55 pound bass on a mojo for Janine Hill. So we are catching, uh, getting into that time of good catching in between the new moon and that next full moon on May 26th. Uh, in fact, the bite has been so good down here, uh, one of our New Englanders came down. Uh, our old New England editor, Dave Anderson, he's the new New England editor of the Fisherman Magazine up there since Toby Lipinski went and joined a National Tackle Magazine a few weeks ago. Well, J Dave dropped me an email uh, with a quick video update to let me know that he was out on the Raritan Bay with his buddy Tom this weekend and had this to report. It was pretty rough out there the day we were out there, a lot of boats too. Um, Way different than what I'm used to, you know, all the New York skyline stuff and all that. But we did pretty good. Uh, There's a lot of fish showing up on the screen out in the middle, kind of 20 feet of water or more. Uh, those fish didn't seem too interested in what we had to throw at them. But as we moved shallower, we found a lot more active fish. Uh, nothing real big. Bass up to the mid-20 pound range. Had some huge blue fish up to 16 pounds. Uh, the only thing we were getting a lot of action on, though, was... Uh, you know, big walk the dog style plugs. Any any big surface plugs seem to draw a lot of action. Uh, we tried swimmers, we tried glide baits, we tried spoons and a bunch of other things, and they didn't seem too interested in that. But uh, whenever we threw the big top water, we'd get hit. Uh, seems to be a pretty wide uh, spread of classes in there too. You know, we've got fish from the low 40 inch range all the way down to probably 18 inches. Uh, so it's good to see a good spread of fish down there, and it was just cool to experience that New Jersey fishery. Just thought you might be interested in hearing about that. Thanks, man. Take it easy. You know, as Dave mentioned, those big bluefish are on the prowl as well. They raced through these inlets in the last uh, couple of weeks after the uh, full moon on the 29th. Some of them have been distributed through the bays. They're in and out of the inlets, but there are some good bluefish still to be had on Raritan Bay. In fact, Captain Dan Mazza reported a monster, a 38-incher, was taken on a white umbrella aboard Quince Revenge 3 over the weekend. Dan said there were lots of stripers and good-sized bluefish in the mix over the past week. So that's good news for up there on the Raritan Bay. And speaking of bluefish, got to remind you, because uh, I really want to see the entries at this point, but the Fisherman Magazine's Dream Boat Fishing Challenge kicked off again on May 1st. In elite eight species, you have eight different species of fish in order to qualify one of those fish in the top 10. If you finish in one of those positions, you're going to win a prize. But everybody's competing for the grand prize at the end, which is a 255 Steiger Craft with a Yami 300 on the back. This this is a great prize package that's going to go to a fisherman member, a paid subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine. Bluefish is one of the categories, and right now we've got 15 to 20 pound bluefish prowling our local waters. So if you get one of those big choppers, and if you're a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine, bring that in to one of our 40 or so way stations from Staten Island down to Lewis, Delaware. Get in on that dream boat contest. And if you want to know how to enter and you're not a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine, that's where it starts. You got to be a paid member first so that you can get in on that chance to win a Steiger 255 and Yamaha 300. If you're looking for a free tournament to enter, I would advise you to jump on the Black Drum Battle. Free to enter. Just go over to blackdrumbattle.com. The top prize in that battle is a $2,200 prize package from Penn. A bunch of good uh, uh, rods and reels and uh, Costa sunglasses. But you also get a trip sometime next year with Captain Happy Bob Cope of Full Ahead Sport Fishing, one of the top drum authorities down in Cape May. We're also offering, if you are a fisherman subscriber, a $500 cash prize on top of that other prize package uh, from Penn. So all you have to do to enter the tournament for free 
is go to blackdrumbattle.com. But we are getting good reports, especially in South Jersey. That Cape May County bite, the Delaware Bay bite is on fire. Uh, solid action getting underway. Joe Bazzelli let me know he had a 58-pounder caught in the Delaware Bay May 7th on the Will C. That's running out of Cape May. Fresh clam from Jim's Bait and Tackle. Joe said, it's on. No doubt it's on. In fact, the young guns are on the action too. 11-year-old Brody or Brady Nadoba, he loves fishing. You can tell by his face. Shows with a 48-pounder. You know, I'm pretty sure I've seen you in the fisherman before, Brady. Recognize a face. Also, a 48-incher for 56-inch. Levi Layfield out of Lewis, Delaware. The nine-year-old put, uh, put the boots to this big boomer that was measured, photographed, and released. Well done, Levi. Some good eating size drum, too. If you're going to release those big ones, uh, those 50s, 60s, 80-pound drum, if you're going to release them, that's fine uh, if you're not going to keep it for the black drum battle. But some good eating size drum are in the waters uh, locally as well, especially behind Brigantine and Long Beach Island. We're talking the 10, 15, 20-pound drum. Uh, might be worth walking out to some of those favorite sod banks that you've always enjoyed the spring striper fishing but try to get some fresh clam uh, especially a sod bank where you can see some of those clam stakes right off the uh, right off the edge of the sod bank because a lot of times those black drum come in making net mess of those clam beds also look for some of those black drum uh, central south jersey around the inlets as well look for the june edition of the fisherman magazine it's in stores here it's for sale here at gabriel tackle chadwick it's in, on sale at gabriel tackle brick as well you can get some more tips and advice on drum fishing with Captain Bob Cope. You'll get all the details on that black drum battle. Tips on some Delaware Bay weak fishing as well. We are in that time of year where weak fish are starting to run through our waters. And I expect to see some more reports on some of those big tide runners. A true tide runner, a trophy weak fish up around 10 pounds. But we're starting to see some more uh, size in some of these weak fish reported. Nick, Nick DeLuca, as a matter of fact, he sent a photo of a good one this week. No details on location, uh, but I'll leave that up to you and me to figure out. But my advice would be working some of those dock lights uh, at night, uh, maybe some of the bridge structures, toss some of those pinkies around at night, especially on the incoming tide. Picking up where we left off last week, the big news last week was the giant bluefin fishery exploded uh, last week. Now, it's um, not that top water blitzing bite we see with some of those schooly bluefin and some of those mediums uh, during the summer, but this the 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 large media the the medium large and the large giants those big fish uh, it's it's what some people have said it's going back to the glory days of the 1980s out there at the mud hole Captain Allen on the mutian with a crew of Nick G De Gennaro, Daryl the creature Gafrida and John Cavalier they brought a 582 pound 102 inch bluefin back from the mud hole into Hoffman's in Brielle on Saturday and Allen told me that that fish that big fish was low with uh, partially digested ling. He said they stopped counting at around 40. And it, while he was trolling there in the mud hole, he said nothing was really going on, but he was paying attention to that color scope, that colorized fish finder. Notice those fish feeding 10 feet off the bottom. So presumably they were just engorging themselves on some of those ling. In fact, the crew from Staten Island Fishing Club, Joe Goliath Soller, Frank Pomponio, and John Wiersauschen, uh, they battled this 640 pound ghost for four and a half hours they said in our backyard so I assume that was pretty close it took some help from some of the nearby captains to get that big boy onto their Steiger because it didn't have a tuna door now I mentioned the uh, the, the mud hole glory days because I was talking to Nick Cicero uh, from Bimini Bay uh, tsunami tackle uh, Nick was one of the highliners back during the glory days of that 80s bluefin run off the Jersey Coast uh, one of the disciples of Captain Bob uh, Pisano uh, and all those greats. Uh, he said the color fish finder tells the story. Uh, the big schools of giants and shallower than normal water. Uh, typically, Nick would say, uh, these freight trains run through, uh, the giants pass through the New York Bight uh, in 30 to 50 fathoms, 40 to 70 uh, miles off. But Nick, th Nick thinks these big schools of bunker are drawing these giants in a little bit closer uh, into some of these shallower areas. And obviously, they're probably keying on some of those ling as well. And Nick had an anecdotal theory about this uh, as somebody who has fished um, the, the south of the Cape waters for quite a long time. But he believes this school of fish is made up uh, of the long fin 
Mediterranean stock giants that folks saw in the 1980s, fish that pretty much disappeared after those glory days in the, uh, by the 90s. He said, uh, those up north were typically shorter and fatter with smaller tails and fins. Those south of the Asia Rip, Montauk, Block Island, were often notably different with big tails and long fins which he speculated were some of those transatlantic migrants. Now, Nick's suspicions are that these giants are the result of a significant increase in the uh, school to medium-sized bluefin that we've seen in, in local waters for the last dozen years. But this is what he said, quote, they seem to be imprinted to the historical area they once occupied and were wiped out by God only knows what on that trip across uh, the high seas. So this is a unique bite. Uh, regrettably, it came to a crashing close this week as people are starting to gear up. Uh, it, it wasn't just these bottom-sucking ling either. One of the highlight catches we heard about on Saturday, a uh, big story was uh, shared in the Fisherman's Instagram account this week. Um, Bob, uh, Rob Radloff and Gerard Facone, looks like they were fishing with Captain Adam Shear, uh, the Waterman Charters and Shear's Boat Basin out of Barnegat. But they caught this monster. They caught two monsters, hooked up with two monsters on spin tackle right fish and poppers up on top kept one released one an epic battle boat to boat assist they needed some help bringing that one giant over the gunnel but again we have uh, 1.8 metric tons of uh, of giant limit and if you break that down that's less than 4,000 pounds so what's that eight eight fish at 500 pounds so while we first got the first reports last monday we talked about it last week as of tuesday night this week 11:30, that giant fishery is shut down doesn't mean every bluefin fishery is shut down folks you can still continue to fish for for bluefin this year go get your hms permit by finding the hms permit site but you don't get to keep that one giant for the season that is shut down but that is it um i'm starting to look forward to 2022 i was looking at the calendar looking at the last reports. Here's, here's my prediction for next year. Call me Nostradamus. Um, mark your calendar. Full moon of April next year is the 16th. So I'd say give it about two weeks. I say the giants roll through on April 28th, 2022. Lock it in. Get yourself all geared up. Get those 80s and those 130s and those big, uh, those big Stellas and Saragossas if you want to hit them up, up on top. I know, I kind of brought it to a downer here with finding out that the giant season is done. So uh, maybe my friend George can cut through the regulatory garbage and sweeten our day from out in the sweet water. George, take it away. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, the weather has certainly put a damper on fishing this past week. Lots of wind, cold, rain, just not ideal for any kind of fishing. In fact, the shad bite has actually turned off almost completely over the past week. You know, guys are reporting very low numbers, uh, just periodic uh, bouts of uh, shad coming up the river. But I think it will come back as we move into next week. We're looking at temperatures starting to move up. But, you know, yeah, we, this wind and the rain and the cold, it's very hard to get a bite on. Now, some of the guys, chasing those cooler water species are doing a little bit better. You know, um, lake stripers have been really good. Uh, we had a Dave Van Trees got there uh, with his first hybrid out on uh, Falls Township Lake, and he got those things on those Kitek swim baits. You know, they're always good for those stripers, whether purebred or those high bits. So congratulations on your first hybrid, Dave. Now also, you know, a lot of guys have been out chasing uh, uh, some of the uh, the walleye too. Another great cold water fish. So when the weather turns cold, kind of go after those those colder water fish like walleye. Uh, his son Tom, Dave's son Tom Van Trees, got a six pound walleye out of Wall and Palm Pack, and we've seen a few other guys getting those walleye as well. Uh, some great fishing there. Uh, also, just you know, something to catch. Uh, Josh Nightingale caught some panfish, some crappie. Always a good thing when you know the wet fishing gets a little tough. You're always going to get those uh, those uh, panfish to bite as well. So when the going gets tough, go for the panfish. Also had a check in from a, a Fred Bickle. Uh, he had some nice trout on some spinners that he makes himself. So again, cold water fish. That's going to be your best option. Things look better next week, guys. I hope we can get this water temp back up a little bit and maybe start getting into some better fish. I hope you guys get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Don't forget, Black Sea Bass reopens this Saturday in New Jersey and Delaware, May 15th. 
Uh, make sure you get your uh, reservations in order. I know a couple of boats have already said, oh, we're booked for May 15th. So if you haven't done it yet, you plan on getting out for Black Sea Bass, you better start calling around right now. Also, the Striped Bass Bonus Program also kicks off on Saturday, May 15th. You'll have to register first. Google uh, Striped Bass Bonus Program. You'll find the state website. Register, follow all the instructions, get that single tag. Again, if you have your tag, you can start to use it as of Saturday. Also, don't forget your saltwater registration. If you're going to fish in saltwater in New Jersey, you got to register. Go to saltwaterregistry.nj.gov. Especially do it now if you're thinking about the big news next week. The start of summer flounder, fluke season in the Garden State. We will back, be back at the action in the back bays, uh, especially because a couple of folks said, oh, you think they'll be at the reef sites? And well, they could be. But I think one of the best places to be next Saturday, probably inlets, right along the edges of the inlets uh, and in the back along the side banks. All depends on water temperature. Uh, but I'll be looking for them on the flats. I know Captain Dave Scholl of Abseekin Base uh, uh, Sportsman, uh, he says that the new gold paddle tail has been great on back bay stripers. I'm wondering if they might be working for uh, Fluke as well. Uh, there's also the new four inch grub and the fire tail pattern swimming mullet. Plenty of new gulp options. We talked about the line last week. I want to tell you about some of the new gulp you'll find in stores this week. A short clip with Aaron Wavera. We fished together out of the Manasquan last summer. Take a look at some of this new gulp. Midst of all, enjoy this weekend. Get on them, and we're going to gear up for fluke next week. Catch them up. We'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com. Here in front of me is gulp. Everybody knows gulp. Gulp is a phenomenal product. One of the best products you can fish with on the coast up here. Um, we got a couple new things going on here. We got some new products. We got launching in September of 2020. We have the paddle shad. This is a brand new shape. You can see it's really designed for action. It's got a great body, great on a jig head, great on a bucktail, great on a single hook as a teaser up on top. Again, the tail here you can see is really designed for that action, really at slow speeds, whether it be on the drop or on a slow roll, bringing it in. This new paddle shad is going to be an ideal bait. We are also launching fire tails. Yeah, finally fire tails in the swimming mullet. This is one of the top shapes already up on the coast up here. And this new fire tail mullet is really going to bring a new element to the uh, visual aspect of fishing with these, these swimming mullets. And then, of course, we also launched the four inch grub. The grub is probably the number one shape when it comes to gulp fishing up here on the coast. We do it in the six and the five and we now have it in the four. It's the exact same shape that you're used to in the six and the five but now available in the four and all the all the top colors. You know gulp has been around forever and and the reason it's so good is because we put the work, we put the time into the science, we really really understand what fish like, what they want to smell, what they want to taste and that's where it comes down to the catch rate. You know you can fish all kinds of different options but when it comes to actually catching more fish gulp is your best bet all day long every day Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters serious english choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the northeast and mid-atlantic visit steigercraft.com for a dealer near you